Hey developers, welcome back into the Architect Labs. Now that we have Blinky moving around our game board, in this video we'll release the others and make sure they're acting properly by adding a target tracker. Want to learn how to recreate this game using Xcode and Sprite Kit? Then stick around. Hey, I'm Michael, the Architect, and this is my channel where experimentation forms creation. If you're looking to learn a little bit about Xcode and Sprite Kit and want to recreate some of the all-time classic arcade games, then you're in the right place. I've already recreated a couple of classics and hope you'll check them out. They aren't perfect and I'm still learning as I build these projects, so leave some comments and tips to help me out. Ready to get our ghost moving? Then fire up your Xcode and let's start coding. Okay, welcome back. Now that we got Blinky moving, let's go ahead and get the rest moving around our screen. We're gonna start today in our constant Swift file. We're just gonna go up under our constant global variables here and let's go to the end of this here and we'll just add in a couple of new variables. This is going to be global state. It's going to be a state. And up front we're going to make it equal scatter. And then we're going to do a global hold state. We won't need these right away, but we are going to need them in a little bit. And some of the code I'm going to put in is going to have these in there, so I want to get them in right away. But for now, We'll leave it like this. We'll go ahead and close our constants file. And let's go back into our ghost.swift file here. And here we're going to go under our properties. And let's add in a new variable here. This is going to be dots required for escape. It's going to be an integer and we'll set it equal to zero. Every ghost has different number of dots needed. And so we'll get all these set up. Let's go ahead and at our ghost defaults here where we set up our ghost originally. And at the end of this, it depends on what level you're on and all those kind of things. And once again, go back to that Pac-Man dossier. It's all in there. This is just taking those rules and putting them into logic. So let's do if level is gonna equal one. And then we'll do our self dots required for scape. This is going to equal, let's do our self.name. If we're talking about Blinky, then zero dots. Otherwise, if we're talking about Pinky, also going to be zero dots at level one. Otherwise, if the self.name equals inky. Inky requires 30 dots on level one and Clyde really requires 60. So we're going to leave it like that. That'll take care of that. Let's go ahead and copy this just so we don't have to type that all again because we're going to go in our second one here. We'll do else if level equals two. Then our dots for escape. If it's blinky, it's going to be zero. If it's pinky, it's going to be zero. If it's inky, this time it's going to be zero. And Clyde needs 50 to get out this time. Anything after that level, the self dots required for escape is going to equal zero for all four ghosts. And this just lets the ghosts know when they can leave the ghost house. And we'll have a global dot counter built in for all that kind of stuff. So now let's go under our, let's go down here under our public methods that we have. And we can add this in right here. We're going to add in a new function. We're going to call this release. It doesn't really need to take anything in or push anything out. But we do want to make sure our state is equal to waiting. We don't want somebody trying to escape unless they're actually waiting to escape. So if they're out on the board, we don't want this, this release function getting called accidentally. Once you get into this release function, then we're going to change our self dot state. We're going to set it equal to escaping. So each of the ghosts will get this assigned to them as they get ready to go. And now we're going to do just a couple of little, um, SK actions to take care of the, the move out. Let's do a, a line center. 
This is an SK action. We're going to do an SK action dot move to. And the CG point, it's going to be a CG point here. We'll do 768, 984. And the duration we want it to take, we're going to use that same kind of duration that we used before. So it'll be a CF time interval. And that time interval is going to be our distance from point divided by our self dot move speed. That'll take care of that. And then let's do a let move up. This is also going to be an SK action. In fact, we're going to do much the same thing here. So I'm just going to copy all of this. Let's put it in here. Clean this up just a little bit. Okay. This action, we're going to move to 768, 1128. So 768, 984 is the center of the ghost house. And then 1128 is directly above that. Let's do a let pause. This will be an SK action. We'll do just a dot wait. And the duration is going to be 0 0.2 seconds. And then let release. Also be an SK action. Let's do an SK action dot run, and we're going to run a block of code with this one. So the first thing we're going to do is self state is going to equal the global state. So whatever state the game is in, if if all the ghosts are in scatter mode, then we want this ghost to get assigned to scatter mode. If they're in chase mode, we want it to get assigned to chase mode. We just want to make sure it gets assigned correctly up front. Let's do align to grid is going to equal false. We don't want it to be able to move until it gets aligned to the grid. Self dot is active equals true. This will allow it to start the movement functions. Self dot is moving equals false. And self dot direction is going to equal dot left. And this is pretty typical. When a ghost releases out of the ghost house, it typically will go left. And the last thing we're going to need to do here is put this into in a into a sequence. So let's do let escape skeet sequence be an SK action. And we'll do SK action dot sequence. And for the actions that we want this to take, we want to make sure that whatever ghost is in there, first it aligns to the center. Then it's going to pause. Then it'll move up and then it'll release. And the last thing we need to do is a self dot run and we'll run that escape sequence. So whenever we call this, basically the ghost will move, move up, get out onto the major grid and then be able to move as it goes along. And that'll take care of everything here in our ghost.swift file. So we can go ahead and close that up. And we're going to go to our game scene. So let's do game scene.swift. And under here, we're going to add in a few new variables as well. So we'll do a time ghost release. This will be a CF time interval. We'll set that equal to zero. Our var global dot counter active. This is a bool equal to false. We'll do of our global dot counter. So be an integer equal to zero. And our var dots eaten. That's also an integer equal to zero. The reason I'm building all this in ghosts get released out of the ghost house in different methods. A lot of the times it's just based on timing. If, if Pac-Man's not eating dots, when a certain amount of time goes through, then a ghost will release. After Pac-Man is killed once, then it goes off of a global dot counter, and we want to make sure we can toggle that counter on or off. Any other time before Pac-Man gets killed, it's based off of the number of dots eaten. So we have different methods of release. We're going to build these all in here. So let's go down into our update method. And right here, we're going to say 
if time of ghost release let's do this is zero makes life a little easy then we're going to do time of ghost release is going to equal the current time so we're going to use that as a timer next thing we want to do we're going to check to see if the ghosts need to be released so we're going to do if self dot global dot counter active if the global dot counter is active this happens after a life is lost the ghosts will release based on this counter And we'll do more code to come here because we're not going to build this in quite yet. Otherwise, and this is where we're going to focus right now, before a life is lost, the ghost release based on time or the number of dots eaten. So we're going to do let seconds to release this is going to be a cg float and it's going to depend on our level if the level's less than level five then it'll take four seconds otherwise it'll take three seconds once we get past level five we're going to do if current time minus the time of ghost release is greater than seconds to release then let's do our var ghost to release will be a ghost we're initially going to set this to blinky and you'll see that in a couple minutes why we're going to do that we're going to do a ghost to release and we're going to do ready preferred ghost. This is a function that we haven't written yet. We'll add this in in just a minute. Let's do if ghost to release equals blinky and blinky is active. Then we're going to do nothing because if blinky is the one that's being told to release, and he's already out on the board, there's nothing to do. The reason I'm using Blinky for the, the initial value is because it'll look at all four ghosts. If everything out of that ready preferred ghost function returns Blinky, that means all four ghosts are already released and there's nothing to do. Otherwise, we're gonna say ghost to release dot release. So whoever it is, inky dot release. Blinky or Pinky, Clyde, whoever it is, that'll happen. And then we're going to come down here. Let's go. Let's see here. That takes care of that. If the current time isn't set the way we want it there, we're going to do another else here. We're going to do a for node and self dot children. We'll do if let the ghost is of type ghost equals a node as a ghost so if we can find a ghost in here if the ghost dot state equals dot waiting and our dots eaten is greater than or equal to whatever the ghost dot dots required for escape is then we're going to reset our dots eaten equal to zero and we're going to release whatever ghost that was and that'll take care of all that so this is our functionality to determine which ghost is going to come out if any ghost needs to come out and how they're going to come out are they going to come out based on time based on dots 
Has Pac-Man been killed in the past? If so, then it goes off the global counter and we'll fix that later on. So now we need to fix this problem here. Let's go ahead and copy that. We're gonna scroll all the way down here under our node methods and let's go to the bottom. We'll create this function. It's not gonna take anything in, but it is going to return a ghost, one of the ghosts. We're just gonna say let preferred ghosts be an array of ghosts, can be any one of them. We're gonna say blinky, pinky, Inky and Glide, the four ghosts that we have. We're going to do for ghost in preferred ghosts. If ghost is active equals false. And the ghost dot state. Let's go back and actually spell false correctly here. There we go. And if the state equals dot waiting, then we're going to return that ghost. If we get all the way through this, if we look at all four of these ghosts, so we're going to look at Blinky first. Is Blinky active equals false and the state equals waiting? Then Blinky would be the one to return. Otherwise, we're going to go through each one of these. If we get through all four of these and none of them are false and none of them are or none of them are waiting, then we're going to go here and we're going to just say return Blinky. And that should take care of this error over here, hopefully. And let's see what we Oh, I see what we have here. We got that in the not quite the right place. Let's get rid of this. Let's put it here where it actually belongs. And that takes care of that. And that goes back to the logic where I had it in before. Up here in our update method, we set them to Blinky up first. If we do this and we run that function and it returns Blinky still, then we're really going to do nothing. Nothing needs to be done. So let's go ahead. What we should see now, we should be able to run the game. Let's go ahead and run this. And hopefully, if everything works right, when the ghosts show up on the screen, there they go. They're starting to escape and they're starting to track all along on the screen, exactly how they should. And they're all going to the four corners. So let's take care of a couple other things now. We need to make sure they're going to the right places. So let's hit stop on that. Close that up. We're going to go back into our constants file. Now that we got our ghosts escaping the way we want them to escape. And here, let's create a new, uh, we'll do a new mark. And this is going to be an extension. We're going to do an extension on SK shape node. And I found this out. I, I did a Google search. I was trying to find some stuff and this extension came up. It's really kind of cool and it works really well. So we're going to do a convenience it. This will be a start, which is a CG point, an end, which is a CG point, Our stroke color, which is going to be a UI color, and a line width, which is a CG float. We're going to do self.init. path equal a CG mutable path path dot move we're gonna to want to move to uh, we'll do our CG point and our XY we'll do our start dot X and our start dot Y so we're going to want it to say where to start from. We'll do a path dot add line. And this again is going to be a CG point. Put in our XY. And this will be our index and end Y. Self dot path is going to equal the path. 
yourself that stroke color. It's going to be whatever stroke color gets pushed in and our self dot line width is going to equal whatever line width gets pushed in. So now let's go with that built in. We'll close out our constants and we're going to go back to our ghost file and underneath our public methods here. Let's go ahead and we'll put this right here before the release. We're going to do a funk show target. This is going to take a Boolean in. We're going to do guard self dot chase target is not equal to zero. And actually we can do not equal to dot zero. If that is, then we just want to return out of this. We don't want to do anything. If that chase target isn't set, there's no point showing a target because that's what we're trying to show. And we need to put an else keyword in here. There we go. And then we'll do if scene dot child node with name. This is going to be a little bit of string interpolation going on here. So let's do our self.name, otherwise just someone. Get out of that, dash target. Let's see, take care of all that. That's not equal to nil. Then we want to go on. Let's make sure we get all of our our stuff here in the right places and it looks like we do. So let's go our scene, child node, with name. And we're basically gonna take, let's see here, da, 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 da. let's copy all of this again. here if we have all that let's see yourself that name and yes I am reading this off of a off of a template because I want to make sure I get this one right we're gonna do our parentheses this is going to be our question mark dot remove from parent See if we got everything right on that one. Okay, so basically when we create these, we're gonna create a target and a target line. We're looking for those two things. If they already exist, we wanna remove them from the parent, we wanna redraw them. If they don't exist, then we're gonna go ahead and press forward with this. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna copy this because we're gonna add in, like I said, a second one here. This is gonna be our target line. And we want that to be our target line. So now that we have those in place, if on, then. So if we're going to toggle our, our target on or off. So if it's on and we have this set to true, we're going to let our target be an SK sprite node. It's going to equal SK sprite node and we'll do image named quote let's do a self dot name otherwise again we're just going to do someone with apostrophe s dash target so that's going to be someone's target or blinky's target or whoever it is Let's do our target dot name. It's going to equal self dot name. Again, let's do this safely. Someone's target. Our target dot Z position. It's going to equal five. We want it to be above the board all the time, not ever getting behind it. 
target.size. It's going to be a CG size. Let's do a width and height of 48. 48. Our target.position. It's going to be our self.chase target. That's why we checked up here to make sure it wasn't zero because that's where we're going to actually position it. And then let's go ahead and do our scene. Add child. We're going to add that target. Then we're going to do the same thing. Let's do in fact, and we probably could just do a little bit of copy and paste here. Let's copy all this, paste it in again, but this time we're going to do a target line. And this is going to equal instead of the sprite node, we're going to do an SK shape node. And let's do a start. It's going to be our self dot position. Our end, it's going to be our self dot chase target. Our stroke color, we're going to do just cyan for now. And our line width, we're going to set to two. And these are all things I just played around with. You can make them whatever color you want, whatever line width you want. You can, you can do whatever you want with that. Let's see what we got going on here. Do I have a problem? I do. This needs to be an SK shape node. That should fix that, hopefully. Yep, that takes care of that. And let's take our target line here. So our new now our target line is going to be the target line name. It's going to be whatever this is, and it's going to be target line. Position is going to be five again for the Z position. We can get rid of the size because it's no longer this one doesn't need a size. It's a it's already set. We can get rid of our position because we're not going to need that. So what we should have is a name, our Z position, and then we're going to go ahead and add in our target line. There, that'll take care of all that. Let's go ahead and do a build here real quick. Make sure we build good. Yep, we're building succeeded so far. So now we're going to go, we'll close out our ghost file here and let's go to our game scene. We got to figure out how to get this thing going now. So we're going to go up here to the top. And at the top under the properties, let's do a var is target on. This is going to be a Boolean. It's going to equal false. We don't want it on all the time. This is really just when we want to turn it on. It's available to us. We'll go under our methods and let's see here where we're moving our ghost. So let's go find that. We have the ghost move here. So right here, Let's do the ghost dot show target. And this is going to be based on is target on. So we'll be able to toggle that on and off. And let's go ahead here. Let's add in a new function. And this is going to be our touches began. We'll get that put in there like that. Let's do a guard let touch equal touches dot first else return if it didn't get a touch or didn't recognize a touch then we don't want to do anything anyways but it's probably going to have that so let's do our let location equal touch dot location in self so where is that touch and then let's do let tapped nodes equal the nodes at that location and let's do a guard let tapped equal tapped nodes dot first else we'll return out of that and with that in place we can now switch on what was tapped dot name we're going to put in just a couple of things here we're actually going to add to this later on but for right now we're going to do case target. With that, we want to do is target on dot toggle. Let's do a default case. And for that, we're just going to break for right now. Like I said, we'll come back to this. 
what we're doing on that S on that game scene. Remember when we built the game scene SKS? Let's bring this back down. We created this little thing up here, and this we called target. So when we're playing the game, anytime you click on this, it's going to either turn the targets on or off, and it'll just toggle back and forth. So now let's press on with that. So let's click on this and we'll hit play and see what happens. Looks like our ghosts are releasing. Might have a little bit of problem here with both of our ghosts releasing at once. We got to check on that. When we toggle this on, looks like we're having a problem with this as well. It looks like for some reason we're not removing the lines. So let's go ahead and hit stop on that. And we're going to go back into our files here. Obviously I missed something as I built this along. So let's start where our ghost is here. Crush this down. And obviously we are missing something in here in our show target because it's not, it should be, if it sees these targets, it should be removing them. So chances are I spelled something wrong somewhere. And I, think let's see here I think where I see our problem here what we're missing is our dashes here and a dash here I have to make sure we name these correctly so now let's give this another shot see what happens there's our ghosts releasing now let's turn on our targets and there we go our targets are working just exactly the way they're supposed to work. Each one of them is targeting their corners because we're in scatter mode right now. Now we need to find out the last piece of this is why one of the ghosts is releasing when all the rest are as well. Okay, after a little bit of research, I figured out where our problem was. We're gonna open up our game scene.swift file here. And one of the things that I missed along the way we're gonna go back up here to where we're doing our releases. And here we're setting in, we're setting a ghost to the release here. And this was basically, you know, if the current time had expired and all those kind of things, what I wasn't doing was resetting the time. So we wanna do a time of ghost release equals current time. And what that does is it resets the timer. So not everything goes at once. Otherwise it's, they're just gonna go at once. So now we should be able to hit play. And again, what we should see is Blinky's already out and moving. Pinky comes out right away. Inky really does come out right away. And then Clyde comes out. Now the four ghosts are coming out in the order they're supposed to. And they'll eventually go back when we eat them or anything like that. And we can still turn on our targets. So that takes care of everything for this video. In the next video, we're gonna have, we're gonna start working with some state changes. So I hope to see you then. I'll see you in the next video.